Welcome everybody and uh, I am so glad to present tonight's guest because we are going to talk about some of the topics that are actually uh, a lot of the people, a lot of the audience have been asking us about and I was like, well, you know, uh, I know some people who actually know a lot about producing content and let me ask one of uh, the, the, the people, one of the persons that I, 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 have, I admire the most and guess what? She is back with us, Sarah Lane. <laughs> How are you doing, Sarah? I'm so great, Dan. Thank you so much for having me and it's a real pleasure. And uh, the, believe me, the pleasure is for all of us, all the people in the audience, and uh, particularly for me. And uh, uh, re remember that if you are watching this live, you can participate in the chat and your comments will be actually uh, be showing down there. If you have any questions in particular, please let us know. And if they are relevant, uh, I will mention Sarah and Sarah will properly uh, answer them. Every single question of you, <laughs> what kind of uh, what kind of, sh of shampoo do you use, Sarah, for example? <laughs> I use purple shampoo because I dye my hair blonde, and if I don't use purple shampoo, it goes red. So oh, there you go. There you have yeah. something that yeah. uh, I didn't know, and perhaps you, I am pretty much you all who are watching this, you didn't neither. So, right. So, Sarah, let's begin with this because I believe that uh, even though we are uh, programmed to talk just a little bit about this, uh, I am sure that pretty much a lot of experiences and a lot of tips uh, can come with this. Uh, let's refresh the memory of the audience because, well, after all, uh, and I have to tell you, sir, uh, both I, I did uh, a couple of interviews last year and one about uh, horror and storytelling and about uh, the other one about content production. And those were the most popular shows. So I was like, if I need to to actually gain some clicks, I'd rather ask once, once again, Sarah. So... <laughs> Can you refresh a little bit the memory of uh, people who perhaps have watched this show? Uh, what kind of experience do you have producing content, which is plenty, I, I, I know. Absolutely, yeah, and I'll make this brief. Um, I always tell people when they ask, I came from television, so I, pr I produced television shows. I ended up becoming a host of television shows, but always still producing, because I like <laughs> sort mm -hmm. of a control freak. I like to, you know, do it all. And uh, around 2000 seven when internet video really just started to kind of get off the ground i realized huh i don't have to live in los angeles or new york or london in order to do this i can do it anywhere not that i don't like those cities but it 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 was opening a door for a lot of people who were really really creative to be able to produce video and audio content from anywhere and use the internet as a platform and have people say oh yeah podcast i know what that is so at that point, I went fully online. So I haven't worked in television, really, uh, you know, as a traditional television, even though that is a whole other conversation, because that's obviously um, uh, entered a new era as well. But mm -hmm. uh, I have been working in digital video for, you know, uh, gosh, uh, I mean, t since the 2007, so almost 20 years. Whoa. <laughs> I know. Crazy, huh? And this is kind of interesting because, for example, um, media has been changing. And, for example, if you are working at television, if you are working at a production company, at a media company or in advertisement, uh, you have to check all the possibilities uh, in case that you want to, I don't know, to do product placement in, in, in case that you want to advertise something. So, for example, if you have a lot of experience in this case on television, believe me, it's not wasted because that will come uh, really handy uh, when yeah. you are working in different media. And, for example, right now, we have a couple of uh, things and we are actually doing one of these things that uh, are perhaps where most of the audience or the young audience are actually uh, consuming media right now and it's internet uh, video in this case and also uh, in podcasting and for example uh, can you tell us a little bit about the transition and perhaps um, some of the things that you feel uh, actually change uh, change the game in this case when you were doing perhaps uh, I don't know uh, regular television and when you switch to uh, online uh, video yeah uh, the biggest the biggest change is that in television and it definitely depends on where you worked but I worked in I worked in local news so 
a, like a, a TV station in San Francisco that was based on that regional area kind of thing, not national. And then I worked in national cable news where it was, you know, it's, it's, it was kind of a U.S. audience, but it was, it was a much bigger audience potentially as long as they were watching. Mm -hmm. And in both of those cases, I got very used to a very large team. You know, somebody did audio. Somebody did the chirons, which is, you know, the like lower third stuff. Somebody was directing. Somebody was doing hair and makeup. Maybe more than one person was doing that. You know, a lot of us were doing content. There was an assistant producer and a, and a production assistant and, uh, and various executive producers, some of which they were all the bosses, but you never really knew what they did kind of thing. <laughs> it was a lot, just a lot of people. That was just the way it was. And so... And that was was fine. I mean, it was you make a lot of friends that way. And it's you know, it's it's a beautiful family as long as you like the show that you're working on. But uh, when I moved into digital video, because, of course, budgets were small, um, the medium wasn't necessarily proven uh, at, uh, at Revision 3, which is one of the first companies I worked at, which has since been bought by Discovery Digital, but at the time was independent. It was we were kind of just seeing what we could get away with, you know, with a very small team. And you learn quickly that there are a lot of, and I, and I don't want to disparage the old guard way of doing television because it, it, it worked in, in many ways. You know, you, you, you didn't have to wear that many hats. You kind of did what you did, but in today's day, uh, that's not, what's going on anymore and in, in many cases traditional tv uh companies realize oh wait we had 30 people working on the show maybe we need just 10 people working on the show mm -hmm. and everybody works a little bit harder so and that's that can be a slog for anybody who works in internet video i'm or, or, you know we're, we're production in general i'm sure that you know you're you're nodding your head in agreement it can be a lot of work it's a lot of work be a thankless job but mm -hmm. i would be lying if i said you needed all those people to do the things that you can do now you just you can just do so much more with many uh, fewer resources and actually that's what brings us to the particular topic that uh, i'd like to to expand a little bit more in here because obviously times have changed obviously the, the equipment has actually got better uh cameras uh, pretty much you actually can can record some things and i edit it with with your cell phone uh, obviously, mm -hmm. the quality will change. But for example, um, right now, if you want to do, uh, let's try to cover uh, a couple of spaces in here. But let's let's begin with something that actually has become really popular, and it's yes, of course, podcasting. Uh, if you have a studio, uh, it can be easier. If if you have the equipment, even though if you don't have a studio, you can pretty much um, arrange everything for it to sound and and look professional. Uh, if you're doing audio and video. But what are some of the things that you have to actually um, pay more attention when you are uh, recording, um, not in a studio, but you have to move the equipment or bring your equipment or perhaps rent the equipment in a different location? Uh, what what, what the things uh, would you say are those, uh, Sarah? Yeah, uh, that I do a fair amount of remote work. Uh, mm -hmm. my, my sort of day job mostly for anybody who listens or watches daily tech news show happens here this is actually a garage but <laughs> uh you know but it I, i've kind of made up my studio and there's some you know workout equipment over there and my dogs on the couch and whatever but <laughs> but uh but that i mean this doesn't really move however i do have quite a bit of work that does and uh so i'll give you an example so i have a a, a podcast that I do not host, mm -hmm. but I engineer and I produce and I write their scripts and I'm just I'm just kind of the overall producer, but I'm not on the show. If you listen to the show, you'll never hear me. I'm not part of it, but I'm I'm the background person. They the the hosts of the show when I lived in Los Angeles, which was up until last October. So for several years until fairly recently, they were based in San Francisco. So everything we did required me to travel you know sometimes we would do stuff in san francisco sometimes in new york we were in chicago you know and it was all sort of like okay i will meet you there i will bring all the gear i'll bring all the stuff that needs to happen and i'll be there on time you know that was my job and when you have to travel with a lot of gear 
especially if you've got I don't know two hosts and maybe two guests kind of it never really has become more than four people at a time although it could but uh but that that requires a lot of gear so it's like I've got my my laptop where I have to capture everything right I've got my four mics I got my mic stands I got my XLR cables I got my preamp uh, I've got my headphone preamp because I want everybody to hear themselves so they understand, you know, the whole mic thing, you know, if you do this, it's going to be a problem. <laughs> it's, Stop it. It's going to be a problem for me later, you know? Yeah. Like, or, you know, you're, you're, you pop your peas or, or you're, you know, kind of being weird and, 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 uh, you know, your, your jewelry is, is, is banging the table, that kind of thing. So I have gotten pretty good at this over time, but there were some problems along the way. And one of the main problems was, like I said, I've got my setup here. And at first I was sort of like, well, a lot of this is, is portable. So when I have to travel, I'm not going to be here anyway. So I'll just, you know, unplug stuff and pack it up and take it with me. And as much as I would like to say that I'm extremely good at, you know, checking off, you know, my, my, uh, uh, you know, my boxes, there were a couple of times where I maybe arrived in New York and, you know, opened up my bag and put everything together and was like, oh, no, I forgot. I forgot that one really, really crucial thing and no one's going to have it. And now I have to go to Guitar Center and buy it. And, you know, I'm, you know, sweating and, you know, upset and people are like, hmm, do you know what you're doing? That kind of thing. It is so... <laughs> That that I I showed up at uh, at a uh, a shoot, and it was uh, it was you know pretty important. And I unpacked everything, and I realized I didn't pack my XLR cables. I I I don't know why. You know, it just it just didn't happen at four a.m. in the morning when I was you know trying to get that flight kind of thing. And it's never really been like. I mean, it's I've worked it out mm -hmm. uh, because you can do lots of things last minute, but. That sucked. And so what I, you know, after a couple incidents where I was like, you know what, you know what I need to do? I need to have two sets of everything because I don't want to move anything that's here right now. This is my, this is my home setup. My work setup is in a bag. That's where it stays. Everything's in there. I don't move it unless I have to. If I do, I make a, you know, copious notes about where everything is. And that way I don't run into issues again. Now, Listen, if you if you are an extremely well managed person, maybe you could get away with using all the same stuff. But I also feel like it helps with fail safe, right? Mm -hmm. If something breaks, then I know I still have that other part at home. So that's what's worked out best for me and has helped not keep me up at night. And for example, it, it's kind of um, interesting because we can actually compare uh with um, an emergency kit uh, when you have for example a backpack with some water with a lamp with some uh, batteries stuff like that that it's perhaps only for survival but in this case it's actually survival of your job or the, or the thing that you are doing so oh, yeah. so and, and for example uh, uh, if uh, you don't mind me mind me asking uh, for example how much uh, do you actually carry on weight it's like a, a medium sized backpack with all the cables and with all the gear perhaps an audio console something like that uh, uh, you mentioned something like this but for example uh, when you have to check it uh, in, in in case that you are actually oh, tra I, traveling oh, I, on oh, a plane I never check the stuff no why way. yeah I, I, if, if you don't mind uh, <laughs> sharing some some information yeah, about it's that yeah probably i mean it's probably <laughs> about it's about 50 pounds. Oh, okay. Now, if, if, you know, if somebody was like, hey, I just need to do like a pretty simple interview with like one other person. Okay, mm -hmm. maybe I would leave a little bit of gear at home. But I've again, I've burned myself enough to know just bring all of it mm -hmm. because you just don't know. I mean, how many times have you, you know, thought you were interviewing one person and all of a sudden it's like, well, but my co-founder is also here. And you're like, oh, okay, uh, right, got it. If you don't have the microphone, you know, you kind of just, you're just, you're building, you know, uh, enough gear into not getting uh, yourself into a jam. But, and, you know, I'm, I'm a, you know, I'm not a, not a huge person, but I can carry a backpack, you know, this is, you know, for, 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 for a while, but I will not check any of this. This is, 
I mean, it, it is uh, some of it. I mean, XLR cable can be beat up pretty much. I've actually never had one fail on me, but I still carry extras. But some of my gear is pretty sensitive. I hmm. mean, if it were to go down, my laptop, for example, I mean, it, that's I mean, that's that's not an option. So <laughs> it's funny. There was uh, this is a freak weird situation that happened at Burbank Airport, which is a small airport in Los Angeles. LAX is the big one. Burbank mm -hmm. is like the little airport that a lot of people like because it's so much easier to go through. One morning I was, uh, I, you know, had all my gear. I had to do a podcast. You know, I was leaving at 8 a.m., you know, had to be there at noon, had lots of time. And I got there and TSA was just down. The machines were down. And they didn't really know what to do. And they were like, okay, well, everyone just has to check the bags that they were going to bring with them through TSA. And I was like, no, <laughs> I'm not doing that. You, like, you're not going to throw this stuff into the cargo area of the plane. There's no way. It'll be broken on the other side. Mm -hmm. I keep it with me always. And it was a whole thing. And, you know, we eventually worked it out. But those... and. <laughs> That is, that's happened exactly once. I mean, that's, that's a pretty weird situation. I've never seen TSA go down before, but it did. And that was one of those times where I was like, yeah, no, I, I, I will not part with this. Never stuff. again. Yeah. Yeah. Never again. Yeah. And so if you're doing a, you know, a day or two somewhere, you know, doing some interviews in and out, usually not a problem because I can, I can have all that gear and have, you know, some simple change of clothes, you know, and mm -hmm. keep it all on me. But if you're going somewhere for a week, and that also happens, you know, for example, when I go to CES in January, which I've done for mm -hmm. the last, I don't know how many years, many years, uh, technology conference in Las Vegas, uh, you know, we're there long enough where I just check my clothes. Because I don't, I mean, they, that, that's just clothes. <laughs> it's a bunch of cotton. But I will not check my my gear. My gear has to stay with me. That's the only way that I feel like I have control over it. Yeah, and I, I actually asked this because, um, for example, I have a, a couple of friends that I we actually have interviewing here. They do mu music production and uh, they they compose music for films. And when the, they also work doing concerts. So, for example, it's one of the worst nightmares, especially if you have to travel with uh, big instruments. Because it all, always depends on the kinds of, of care that the, the people at the airlines, in this case, uh, uh, it depends on, on the kind of attention that they pay to, 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 the, to the object. So, for example, I remember that last year one, one case was um, really um, commented here in Mexico because uh, a cellist, uh, well, let's say that the, the instrument that she brought, uh, it didn't uh, arrive um, complete. Uh, mm, and she, right. uh, actually and, that she was, and that was precious, I'm sure. Yes, and for example, you can say perhaps it, it wasn't like a particular uh, violin that the, it was made in the, in the 12th century, something like that. But in in this case, it's the instrument for her to work. And if she actually was coming to 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 perform an, uh, a concert, well, then you have to find a replacement for this. And it's not the same if it's, if it was your own instrument and or something that you actually have to to get. And uh, my friend, who is a musician, he, he was always complaining about that because he was also carrying perhaps electronic stuff as, as uh, so, some stuff similar to the one that perhaps you or, or I have, have been working, uh, some mixer, some, some, some microphones, stuff like that. And it was kind of funny because, um, well, that, the situation that I mentioned before, it wasn't funny, but for him, uh, at a later time, it became funny, funny in the way that, well, you know, Uh, one of the things that you usually have to carry are microphones. And you know that some of the cases that you have to, to put them, well, you don't have, but, but it's preferred if you put them in there to, to, to protect them, are metal cases. And mm -hmm. he was like, well, you know, this way it actually looks like I am smuggling something because it looks like oh, if yeah. I was a drug dealer. And that's one of the red flags that perhaps you, uh, we can be joking about that. But uh, a TSA agent, perhaps, it will be asking you, okay, open this, and perhaps they want to understand what you are actually bringing. If it's a microphone, or something like what, what you have in there or what I have in here, okay, it can be something uh, easy to catch. But if you are bringing some other stuff, it will be like, okay, what's this? This is kind of where, oh, yeah. uh, where it's not a bomb. Have you had uh, any particular piece of equipment that uh, perhaps brought you these kind of problems? Yeah. Yeah. So I mentioned that I always keep all my equipment with uh -huh. me because 
it makes me feel safe. As long as it's with me, I will I will deal with the hassle of somebody uh, trying to understand what I have. Mm-hmm. My the the thing that I get the most is, what is all this stuff? Are you a DJ? I go no, oh, nice. I, I, just <laughs> podcaster, yeah. But um, and anybody who's watching the video version of this, this is a uh, uh, one of my. Um, uh, my mic stands that I, I have a bunch of them and they pack up nicely and they just look a little bit like weapons Oops. when they're packed together, especially if there are a few of them. Like I literally had somebody be like, are those nunchucks? And I was like, no, they really aren't. They're microphone stands. Let me show you. Let me show you how it works. But I mean, I've gotten and I've gotten very annoyed about this. There have been times where, you know, I'm kind of in a hurry and they're you know taking apart all my stuff and swabbing it and looking at me and I'm sort of like, I mean this is all above board. I don't know what to tell you. Mm-hmm. I have now I've become very zen about it. I give myself extra time because I know someone's gonna get confused. I know how to unpack. You know you kind of pack up. You get to the airport. You unpack everything. Then you pack it up again. And even then, uh, I would say about fifty percent of the time, someone. I believe we lost Sarah for a second. Let me see if uh, there is a connection problem that we have in here. If not, don't worry. Uh, uh, we'll try to fix it in a couple of minutes. Meanwhile, I will sing the song of my people. I don't know what that uh, will happen, but let me check. Um, if you're watching this live, si están viendo esto en este momento, uh, you can join me and uh, perhaps sing something. It's kind of interesting because there you are, Sarah. Sorry, uh, I believe that we lost you for a minute. Uh, but uh, oh, you did? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's kind of weird because uh, I believe that a TSA agent, TSA agent, was actually <laughs> spying on us, and the last minute actually uh, I couldn't get it. Uh, here, let me see. There you are. And, yeah. Uh, uh, remind me where we left off, and I can pick up. Back. Let me just check because yeah, this is uh, just so you know that I am not lying. Actually, what that, that was the uh, the the, the, the sure previous call lying. screen, and this is the <laughs> current. So it was like, oh, okay, let me sing the song of my people to all <laughs> of you who are watching. And uh, I uh, I was talking with Sarah just before we started the conversation that uh, Hangouts was actually acting really nice. Way to go, Google! Thanks for letting me down. Way to go! They're <laughs> they're letting you know. Dan. All right. They're so, knocking on the door. Exactly. Yeah, so I'm sorry. Where did where did Don't we uh, where did we fall off? I will so, I will pick back up. Yeah, you you were telling us the meaning of life and how you can be happy with that. No, no, no. I mean, uh, you were telling us about the tricks that, for example, you were uh, you were uh, getting ready. Uh, for example, when you are about to arrive uh, to to a terminal or something, the way that you yeah. actually uh, put all all your stuff so it's easy to to bring out to to check. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So so, as I was mentioning before, I have. I have realized that I am going to get stopped by TSA. Mm -hmm. Every so often, someone is sort of like, "Eh, whatever, you know, fine. But most of the time, I will get stopped and I will be I will be questioned about certain equipment. You know, what is this? What does it do? It doesn't look like a tape recorder. Doesn't Mm. look like a video Mm -hmm. camera. It's not a cell phone. What is it? You know, and I explain. And uh, because of that, (laughs) and I have this. I have a top loading backpack that I use for the most part. I mean, I have a rolling luggage that I use if I have to, but I prefer to kind of have the whole thing on my person. And I like the top loading because I feel like it's very safe. It's hard to get in there. But that said, it's annoying to unpack once you've packed it because you have to pack it, leave your house, go to the airport, unpack it, explain everything to everybody, and then pack it again. So I have to pack everything twice. I've gotten used to it. Not the end of the world. It is an annoyance. Uh, and sometimes people do sort of look at me like, hmm, what are you trying to get away with? And I'm like, <laughs> I'm a podcaster. Sorry. You know, <laughs> all, all stuff you can buy at Best Buy, you know, today or on uh, Amazon. And it's but, kind of, uh, it, it's mm-hmm. just kind of, it's just sort of the way it goes. Yeah. And it's kind of interesting because, for example, uh, when, when, when you actually look at it, 
It's not like if you were bringing a particular, let, let's talk once again about, about microphones. It's something that you actually can spot and it's something really easy to find. And yes, of course, if you are working as uh, security for not, not, not only for an airport, but for, but for any kind of um, institution, for, perhaps for a building, you want to be cautious for people um, bringing stuff that perhaps can, can serve other purposes. Yeah. But yeah. uh, but uh, but as as you mentioned as you were mentioning that perhaps uh, the, the packing and unpacking as uh, one part of this ritual, I was remembering uh, myself because for example all, all the gear that I use for in this case for when I'm going into location perhaps to a film festival to do uh, some some shootings or even right now the, the lights that I am using at this very moment. Uh, I just uh, decided to well let's put it in a way like if uh, let's arrange it. Pretty much like if it was a, tre a Tetris game, in a way that you actually can fit it, but you can also align it and bring Tetris, it, uh, and make yes. it easy to to bring it in, in case that you I need. Actually, I actually, I actually, I explain it that way to people all the time. <laughs> I'm like, it's like Tetris. It goes in a certain way. I know how it's supposed to go. I know what you know. The 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 stuff that is less likely to get crushed goes at the bottom. You know, weight distribution, the whole thing. Uh, so so yes, it is. It is. It is an art. It is <laughs> it is cumbersome. It is. Mm -hmm. I, I I never am like, yay, I get to pack all my stuff up and go to a job. But I like the jobs. So that's just the way it goes. And you get to go to really fun places. Mm -hmm. So that's, uh, you know, we were talking before our show started about travel. And I love traveling. So this is like, It's so cool to be able to be like, yeah, I've got everything on my back right now. Everything, everything you need. I've got it with me and I don't need any help. Just, you know, give me a power outlet. We're good to go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, for example, now, now that you mentioned that you have pretty much everything that you need, uh, um, obviously depend of the kind of production, the kind of show, uh, obviously the kind of equipment, it can be less, it can be more depending on the number of, of, mm -hmm. of people involved. But for example, in, in, in case of uh, Sarah Lane, uh, you are going to uh, be working on a production and you are going to interview, uh, uh, let's just put a number for the sake of the discussion, uh, three people. Usually, how many people have to be involved, in this case, in the particular production? We start, uh, we began the conversation mentioning how, how, how much it has changed and how the uh, we are have been actually able to reduce the number of items but uh you think that also the number of people involved in the production of a show uh, it can be reduced well it always can if the budget is really really low but w what will be like a comfortable number of people involved in this case uh, producing one show with uh the interviewing three people right with quality still being high yes uh, let's say what? that budget is not a problem in this case sure uh when it comes to audio that's one person mm -hmm. that's me i do it all the time Uh, when you have good microphones, you got a good preamp, you capture audio in a way that you can deal with later, discrete channels for everybody, mm -hmm. you need one person. Now, some people would be like, oh, too much. I, I, need, I need help. And that's fine. I can do it by myself. When it comes to video, that's a different story because there's only so much uh, a uh, predator, as we call ourselves. Uh, where your producer, editor, everything. Um, there's only so much you can do because if something goes wrong, you just can't check everything. Mm -hmm. So if, for example, there was a three-person interview, someone would have to run audio and someone would have to be running video. Uh, it is possible to do it all yourself, but that's crazy because something will fail and then you're just screwed and you, you would you would end up with an issue later that you can't fix, which is the worst, the absolute worst. Like, sorry, <laughs> didn't get your interview after all. I thought I was doing it. Uh, so I, I would always have another person with me. But I mean, even then, you're talking about like a two-person team. If people know what they're doing, they understand the equipment, the hardware, uh, and the hardware can be really squirrely, the software, And, you know, what is how things are being captured, how things are going to be backed up right away to some sort of cloud service so that when you fly home and your hard drive goes out, it still, you know, it still lives somewhere where you can, you know, keep the project going. It is remarkable how much you can do with 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 such few resources. Again, means you're working harder. Mm -hmm. That's just the way it goes. I will tell you when I think about my TV days, I'm like. 
I didn't even do anything. <laughs> really. I just like showed up and talked and everyone else did stuff because there were so many of us with, you know, our own jobs. But if you, if you like the medium and you like production and you would like to be in control, then having fewer people on hand can actually work to your advantage. Uh, for me, I, I feel really, really proud when a project is over because I'm like, that was me. It was all me. I did all, all of that. <laughs> uh, and, you know, and it also, I, I feel like, helps uh, those of us who are freelancers get a lot more work because you can say that you know how to do a lot of things. You know, like, there's not a lot of... Back in the day, I think I, you know, you sometimes would say, yeah, sure, I know how to edit video. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll, I'll figure it out before I get there kind of thing. And now it's like, I just have to do so much of that that it doesn't stress me out anymore to, for someone to be like, here's my project. Are you interested? Do you want to, you know, do you want me to pay you to do this? And usually I'm like, yeah, I can do that. It's more a question of time for me now. Mm -hmm. It's not a question of, oh, I, I don't I don't have that skill because I kind of do at this point. So it feels that that's a nice feeling to be able to, for the most part, say I, I can do that. And it's interesting because also, well, of course, you have to 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 contemplate all the, the different bar uh, variables that you have in there, because uh, even though you have the skills, Uh, perhaps it's not. Uh, it can be cost efficient, but perhaps it, it cannot be time efficient. So, in in, in a yeah. particular case, uh, for example, I love editing and I love shooting, and I I can pretend to be a host for some shows, perhaps. But for example, if I don't have the time, well, let me just do the recording. I don't have to be a predator. Well, I I don't have to be a, a mm -hmm. we call it in Spanish a, a todologo, a todologist, at every every uh, everything, everything in yeah. all logist, something like that. Uh, if, for example, I have to deliver something, uh, let's say, um, this uh, Friday, and I have just one day to, for shooting. So you also have, also have to learn that even though you have the skills, and even even though perhaps you, you think that only you can deliver the product in the perfect uh, conditions that you want it to be, well, uh, perhaps if I get some help, uh, actually we can deliver it faster and with uh, an excellent quality, uh, even though it's not as yeah. perfect as I want it to be. <laughs> yeah, that's um, that's actually I would say the the number one thing that I struggle with now because I have I have I have you know several jobs I I work on uh, you know a, a handful of podcasts I'm I'm pretty busy and I love all of it it's all you know the, it's it's some of it is technology based some of it is not um, but all of those projects work because they work with my schedule. Um, I, I get uh, questions all the time from, you know, because people know what I do, you know, mm -hmm. and a lot of my friends, they know what I do, but they kind of don't really know what I do day to day. So they say, you want more work? I'll, you know, let me introduce you to somebody. They want to do a podcast and the podcast will be like six months full time in London. <laughs> and right. I'll be like, I, I can't do that. I, I uh, that sounds great. But I mean, I, I have other jobs to the point where I only have a few hours on certain days of the week to get your project done. So there are also things that I have to turn down that sound really cool because I would have to quit other things that I do now in order to fit them in. And that's just not going to happen uh, mm -hmm. because, you know, I've, I've got a good uh, situation going on. I also think that Time management, I talk about this with all my free, freelance people all the time, is so crucial because you can, I work from home. I mean, I travel, certainly, but for the most part, day to day, I'm working from home. I'm doing most of my, my remote work uh, from right here. And if I stay in my pajamas all day, well, I mean, if I'm on video, someone will figure it out eventually, but I can kind of get away <laughs> with it. But it's not good, like mentally for me, you know, you, it's it's you want to feel like I have to feel like I get up in the morning, I walk my dog, I have breakfast, make some coffee, and then I go to the office because that's the only way it works for me or I feel like I'm not productive enough. So I have to almost mimic the idea of going to an office, even though I have the luxury of not having to. 
but also you have to uh, keep those, let's say, those channels um, apart because, for example, even though you can have um, the comfort of uh, working in this case, you, you have your own studio. Uh, and uh, you can be wearing anything that you want um, for, for, for the sake of, of the show. Um, but also you have to, to separate these things because it's like, okay, perhaps I am using the same computer that I use for gaming for producing the show. But I have to get in the, in the mentality of right, right now, for example, before uh, we began this conversation, I was doing some audio recordings. And for me, it's like, this is my, my production suit. So if I want to go gaming or something like that, I have to, to go out there and I will be perhaps wearing something else. In this case, I, I am wearing a, a fancy uh, shirt with a famous director because I want to talk about production in this case. Uh, but but it's like also it also helps you to... to, to Uh, within your process, I believe, uh, to, to, to get in the mindset uh, proper for, in this case, for, for work. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> for sure. I am, mm -hmm. um, this is, this, uh, I mean, <laughs> like I said, my, my uh, studio Redwood is still under construction somewhat, but, uh, but it's a really nice big space. There's so many options for lighting and, you know, I have all sorts of, you know, ideas for the whole thing, but, but this is kind of like, this is where I work. Now, and this is actually, I, I live above this, just to give you a sense of like, mm -hmm. this is like a garage and then my apartment is above it. So I can go upstairs and I can still work. I mean, I can't, you know, there's a desktop here and, you know, all sorts of gear. So it's like, I can do most things I need to do if I wanted to from my couch, right? Like if I had to like edit something kind of complicated, this is the better place to do it, but I can do it upstairs if I had to. It has happened a few times, but every time I'm just sort of like, Ugh, it's not right. Like, I like the separation of church and state. <laughs> uh, and uh, and it, it I, I have heard so many times from people and this is a, it, 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 something that I heard well before I was ever kind of in the situation myself of you can't work from home. You're going to go crazy. You know, you need you need to get out. You need to, like, rent yourself a space, go somewhere and work and then come back home. And I was sort of like, well, that's crazy. That doesn't apply to everybody. Um, but there is a lot of truth to that. Mm -hmm. I in in uh, my past couple of living situations, I had, you know, an extra bedroom and that would be my office. And that was great. This is not really that different. But there is something nice about being like, no, I have to leave my apartment, go downstairs, walk into the office, the studio where I am, and then I work. Uh, but if for some reason, I don't know if I had the flu or you know, coronavirus or something, <laughs> whatever, but, uh, it, you know, and I had to kind of be upstairs, I could still work because... You know, again, the beauty of cloud services. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, I think I think it it goes both ways. It's also nice to be able to, you kind of know. All right, what do I what do I have? What what are the what's the hardware that I need? And this goes back to traveling again. What are the things that I need to bring with me? What are the things that I know I can pull as long as I have an internet connection on the other side, so that you don't necessarily have to go too crazy about what you have. And that is, you know, I don't know if it's Dropbox or iCloud or, you know, a variety of other services that you could, you could have, you know, Creative Cloud is my savior. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, that is different for everybody. But it, uh, again, for me anyway, it provides me so much freedom to kind of make it my own. Hmm, there you have it. And uh, I just will come back for a brief comment for something that you mentioned before and, well, something that we discussed before. And it's also um, when we're talking about the number of people that have to be involved in a project and uh, because uh, one person can be, uh, and you mentioned it, uh, one person can be in charge of audio, another person can be in charge of video. It also helps a lot when you have more people uh, checking the work that you are doing because even though uh, you, have, you can have plenty of experience and you can be the most professional uh, person, uh, a different set of eyes and a different set of ears always uh, helps. And I, I mentioned this because, um, and I apologize with the audience, because we have a show, uh, I believe it was uh, last week, um, no, a couple of weeks ago, that it was, uh, for me, it was like a milestone because we could get actually a, a discussion forum with a lot of uh, people that I respect. And I had something that I didn't check particularly with my microphone. So all the audio that I was uh, getting there uh, was saturated. 
the audio from the guest was perfect. But for example, for me, it was like, um, I, 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 there's a phrase in Spanish that uh, means that uh, I am, estoy quedando mal con las visitas. I am uh, giving a bad image to the people who are visiting my place. So it was uh -huh. like, yeah. oh, with, the, with all the people that I wanted to to impress to, to yeah. impress and, yeah. i just screw it like really, really horrible so uh, i mentioned this once again because uh, believe me even though i uh, you can have pretty much have everything checked always check twice sarah can can tell you but because we we before <laughs> we actually started i was like okay let me do a recording let me check again because uh, something can happen and luckily at least from our side it didn't happen but you can check that as uh, we had some Uh, connection problem is in this very show and it's something that you can predict but you have to be ready to to, to plug and, and, and bring uh, in this case uh, a, a, another option to fix it and uh, perhaps if people want to, to to know more about this and perhaps if people want to more uh, to, to discuss more about this they can find you on the internet right Sarah? Yes, yes I'm I'm Sarah Lane that's Sarah with an H S-A-R-A-H-L-A-N-E <laughs> Pretty much everywhere. That's Twitter and Instagram and Facebook, and that's that's been my persona for some time. Mm -hmm. uh, I uh, I do a lot of lurking on Twitter these days more than <laughs> I do a lot of tweeting, but I'm definitely there. Don't you worry. Um, my dog also has an Instagram. Huh. Um, that's Otis Redding Lane uh, on Instagram. Just in case you want to check him out, he's pretty cute. But uh, but yes. Uh, besides that, I I produce. Daily Tech News Show every day with Tom Merritt and Roger Chang and a host of wonderful guests. And Compost is one of them every yeah. so often. In fact, it's been a while. You should get back on the show pretty soon. <laughs> uh, and it's 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 Daily Tech News. It's That's my thing. Um, and I also produce um, uh, a variety of other uh, podcasts, Unfinished Biz, It Never Gets Old. Um, a lot of that is at about.me slash Sarah Lane. But uh, I'm pretty easy to find online. There you have it. Uh, I was just uh, showcasing perhaps one of the of the means of contact, but pretty much you can also find uh, pretty much everything the, about the, the, the shows that you produce because you are also promoting in there. And as you mm -hmm. mentioned, uh, there we have a daily tech news show, which is something that um, I know that perhaps I am not listening at the show at the moment that it's planned uh, for the audience to, 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 to listen to it. But for example, for me, it's great uh, to begin the next day, for example, the show that was recorded today, it's the way that I go to work and the, the way that I, I have such a good day, the, the, the way that I have a good morning is by listening to these guys. To these guys, I, I obviously mm -hmm. talk about Sarah, Tom, and, and Roger, and, uh, and guests, and Patrick, and uh, the rest of the co-hosts, because it's one of the most enjoyable experiences that you can have in audio and also on video. So there you have it. You can contact them in there. And I, I want to plug something. And the, the, the show that I mentioned that I made a horrible mistake... There was also with a guest that perhaps you know about, uh, Sarah, because one of the guests that we have uh, for that occasion was also Tom. So uh, please, if he, if he says something and, and if he complains that, oh, that, can, that guy, Dan Campos, he doesn't know about the quality of the shows. Uh, <laughs> I know that he, he will never, never say, say, that. say that. He would never say that. Yeah, <laughs> no, but no. For me, it was like, oh. Crap, I mean, <laughs> listen, I mean, if it makes you feel better, Dan, on DTNS all the time, and we have... You know, Roger's our producer, mm -hmm. the, you know, but we have backup. Uh, um, there's always a chain of command, sort of like, okay, you're doing this, but then I will do this in case your <laughs> situation fails. <laughs> and then Sarah will do this and let, if my situation fails. And even then, you know, what, there are times where if we're on the road sometimes, you know, we all, you know, unpack our gear and it's like the person who was supposed to bring that one cable was like, oh, no. I don't have the cable. Do you have the cable? Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much for bringing the cable Safe. that you weren't supposed to bring. Because, you know, like, yeah, like it, it, it just, it's just the way it goes. You know, we're all human after all. All right. And uh, to leave it in a great note, I just want to also to share. I believe that I have the, the right uh, Instagram ad uh, address, but is this a good boy? That's a good boy. That's my pup pup. Yes, that's, uh, that's the cutest dog in America. Just so everyone knows. We've, we've figured it out. He's the cutest. Um, and he he loves friends online. So if you like dog Instagram accounts, this is the one for you. <laughs> there, there you have it. There you can find it. And I, I actually was just uh, waiting for me to, to, to find it there really, really, really fast. And there you have it. All right. So thanks to everybody who has been uh, with us uh, watching this, uh, this conversation. Tomorrow it will be also available uh, as an audio version. 
and also it will be available in the rest of the video channels that we are uh, using for Churros y Palomitas, which is the name of the of this main page. Uh, and especially, Sarah, thanks a lot for your time and your experience. I really ha have a blast talking with you. <laughs> Yes, I did too. This was so nice. Uh, thank you for inviting me, and I look forward to our next conversation, whatever it may be about. Yeah, it, it will be always enjoyable. So, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> all right, and also thanks to all the patrons who are supporting this show, and you will see all their names in the end credit sequence right now. <laughs> 